do commend this bill to the House. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Shane Jones. Uh, kia ora no tātou. Māori Language Week goes on. I, I want to just focus on three things. Obviously, we support this bill. Number one, it is a challenge to attract talent into the broader civil service when they feel that their prospects could be compromised if we are too constrictive in terms of their entitlements and opportunity to develop as senior executives. But the public service is called the public service for a reason, and inherent in the word public is the notion of service. We, after, we after all, are public officials ourselves, and it pains me that the level of scrutiny that I personally have suffered from time to time does not seem to be equally shared by these grandees in the civil service. This is one of the reasons why I support this bill and giving the our party supports this bill and giving the uh, commissioner of the state sector greater powers to discipline the appetites that have grown out of control, certainly over the last nine years. I think at one level, uh, Madam Speaker, our experiment with the civil service right back to Geoffrey Palmer when he introduced this notion of Darwinism, and that's led to great um, pillars or silos, has actually gone too far. And we've debated this obviously as politicians on our side of the House, and I'm glad to hear Mr Hudson say that, broadly speaking, they share our concerns. But it should be seen that there is an element of service that is not fully monetized when you take a role like a parliamentarian or a senior executive in the broader civil service. And if you don't like that, go and get another job. Go and work for Graham Hart or Peter Talley and see how much money they're willing to pay you. Don't come with an unrealistic set of expectations as to what is your worth. First start from, from a sense, what is the service that I'm prepared to develop and bring forward within my own ethical framework. We feel very strongly about that. Now, it might be said that we're going to chase away talent from some of the more uh, peripheral entities that comprise the civil service. Well, go away and work somewhere else. Uh, I think it's uh, high time, Madam Speaker, that those of us, and as parliamentarians, we should stick up for that. We've come out of our private lives into uh, the culture and the code of uh, public service and the people who execute our decisions or who challenge from time to time our decision making to ensure that it's robust and compliant with the law, uh, in my view, this is the new reality for that cadre of fellow travellers in the broader civil service. The other point that I think that um, is important for all of the parliamentarians and we most certainly support is the ability for the state sector, uh, the, let's call him Mr Peter Hughes, he's the current holder, to undertake inquiries that give him greater scope to uncover what has actually happened. Now we've had, and just bear with me Madam Speaker, I'm not going to stray too far off the script, we have had obviously a particularly colourful set of issues over the last six weeks dealing with a senior police officer and the inquiries that are being in, engaged in in relation to how he got his job and who he might have uh, yelled at and, and various other matters that unfortunately have been trivialised by the opposition and the business of the House. But an inquiry ought to be based on natural justice. An inquiry should have the ability to cause people to tell the truth. It's certainly where information has been shared that has a direct impact on the ability of us not only to exercise our accountabilities as members of parliament, but also on the leaders of the state sector to root out elements that actually undermine the ability. Now, I hear the last speaker, he talked about don't go too far and ensure that you don't make the inquiries process not only excessively expensive and cumbersome, but we don't tr um, trip up in terms of other processes that the state has in place. But this is an opportunity to tidy up a part of our governance culture that has been screaming out for attention. I'm sure I speak on behalf of a lot of the members in the House. I personally have had a gutsful of seeing the Percocites, the excessive emoluments 
the excessive remuneration culture creep in to the upper levels of our civil service at a time where it's been inversely treated for us as parliamentarians. And we should never forget that we are only a small body of people, 120 odd, and there are thousands and thousands of fellow New Zealanders holding their ro these roles. And uh, I feel very strongly that this law should curb any expectation at the top of the tree they have for ever rising remuneration packages. The sooner that we see the rear end of that type of personality in the civil service, the louder I will clap. The final thing, um, Madam Speaker, about this bill is that it's something that we should all be joined in as parliamentarians. If we don't build a law that improves accountability, who is going to do it? Are we going to rely on the media to do it? Are we going to rely on um, people using the powers of the judiciary and the court to do it? No. We should be passing legislation that enables us as parliamentarians to demonstrate in the pyramid of influence we, the elected people of New Zealand, are at the top of the pyramid and we trust the agencies to carry out their legal mandates in such a way that we can defend not only in action but in remuneration. And I hope that this bill shows that there's a conjoining of all of us that the days of disproportionate appetites to what the role really is, is coming to an end. Now, I accept that the SSC has a view that the best thing to do is to appoint generalists and not appoint people that are technically proficient. And uh, I, I personally prefer uh, an option where we encourage as many people that have technical proficiency to roles and teach them to be general managers, rather than get general managers and teach them to be technically proficient in what are demanding roles. But I'm a New Zealand First MP. I'm a long way from ever being the State Sector Commissioner. And uh, I gave up uh, on that prospect at about the point I went started to go to school. But whether they are technically, technically uh, adept at a certain area or whether they're generally proficient, the time has come for us to empower Peter Hughes to ensure that their salary expectations and their remuneration packages don't stray too far from what we put up with as parliamentarians and ministers. And if they don't like it, then the sooner they go out to the private sector and try and earn a living there, the better. Thank you very much. Uh, I call the Honourable Jackie Dean. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I am very concerned when a 